AQA Chemistry 2 Complete Revision Notes. Feel free to pause the video and make notes. I would advise that you download this video as an MP3 file and listen to it whenever you can. Make sure you understand what is being said. This is the most important thing. Alchemists may have experimented, but John Dalton was one of the first true chemists. John Dalton was the first modern scientist to use the idea that everything was made of tiny particles, atoms. Elements cannot be broken down into simpler substances as they are made from one type of atom only. There are just over 100 different kinds of atom, so there are just over 100 different elements. Compounds are made when atoms of different elements chemically join together. Compounds have different properties from the elements from which they are formed. Noble gas electron structures are very stable. That's why they are so unreactive. Chemical reactions occur when other atoms try to achieve the stable noble gas structure. Metals have electrons in the outer shell that can be lost to form positive ions with a stable electron configuration. Nonmetals gain extra electrons to form negative ions with a stable electron configuration. Metals and nonmetal ions can join together to make strong ionic bonds to form ionic compounds. Ionic bonds form between metals and nonmetals when the metal atom loses electrons and the nonmetal atom gains them, forming ions. The charges on ions need to balance in a neutral ionic compound. You can work out the formula of an ionic compound if you know the charges on the ions. Molecules form from non-metal atoms when pairs of electrons are shared between the atoms. The bonds holding the atoms together are called covalent bonds. Some elements form molecules on their own. Most molecules are compounds. We use different models to show covalent bonds for different purposes. Carbon and silicon dioxide form giant covalent molecules. Metals have loose outer electrons which give rise to their properties. These electrons become delocalized in the metallic structure. Metals conduct heat and electricity because of their delocalized electrons. The delocalized electrons also explain why metals are strong yet can be easily shaped. There are weak forces between molecules. When substances made from molecules are melted or boiled, it is the weak forces between molecules that are overcome. The covalent bonds themselves do not break. Substances made from simple molecules have low melting and boiling points. Substances made from simple molecules do not conduct electricity because molecules are neutral. Ionic compounds are made up of positive and negative ions in a giant lattice. There are strong electrostatic attractions between the positive and negative ions, so ionic compounds have high melting points. Ionic compounds conduct electricity when molten or dissolved because the ions can move. Diamond, graphite and silicon dioxide are examples of giant covalent substances. Giant covalent substances are made of a giant network of atoms joined by covalent bonds. Giant covalent substances have high melting points due to the need to bring, break covalent bonds. Diamond and graphite have different properties due to differences in the way the atoms are joined together. Carbon can also form fullerenes, which are molecules made of linked rings of carbon atoms. New uses are being found for fullerenes. Metals conduct heat and electricity because their delocalized electrons can move through the structure. Metals can be bent and hammered into shape because their layers of atoms can slide over each other. P 
Pure metals are too soft to be useful for most purposes. Alloys are mixtures of metals with other elements or metals such as carbon. Alloys are harder than pure metals because there are atoms of different sizes, making it less easy for layers of atoms to slide over each other. Shape memory alloys such as nitinol can return to their original shape after being deformed. Polymers made from different monomers have different properties and uses. The properties of a polymer can depend on the reaction conditions when it is made. Thermal setting polymers have cross links between polymer chains, making them hard and rigid. They do not soften or melt on heating. Thermal softening polymers do not have cross links and they soften and melt on heating. Nanoparticles are particles between 1 and 100 nanometers in size. Nanoscience is the study of nanoparticles. Nanoparticles have different properties to the bulk material because a high proportion of the atoms are at the surface, so there is a high surface area to volume ratio. There are many new and potential uses for nanoparticles. Atoms contain a central nucleus containing protons and neutrons, surrounded by electrons and energy levels. The, at the atomic number is the number of protons in an atom. The mass number of an atom equals the number of protons it contains, plus the number of neutrons. Isotopes are atoms of the same element, because they have the same number of protons, with a different mass because they have a different number of neutrons. The relative atomic mass, AR, compares the mass of the atoms of an element with the mass of 12 carbon, which is assigned a mass of exactly 12. The relative formula mass, MR, of a substance is the sum of all the relative atomic masses of all the atoms in the formula. The mass of one mole of a substance equals the relative formula mass in grams. Mass, moles and mR are related by the equation. Mass equals mR times moles. The mass of chemicals that react or are produced in a chemical reaction can be calculated by finding reacting quantities in moles or by using mass ratios. In practice, reactions do not give as much product as expected. The percentage yield gives the amount of product formed as a percentage of the amount expected. Percentage yield equals mass of product obtained divided by maximum theoretical mass of product times by 100. The yield is less than 100% because some reactants or products may be lost during the process. Other reactions may take place, and some reactions are reversible, meaning that the products can turn back into the reactants. All substances have an empirical formula, but substances made of molecules have a molecular formula as well. The empirical formula of a compound represents the simplest ratio of atoms of each element in the compound. The molecular formula of a compound gives the number of atoms of each element in one molecule. The empirical formula of a compound can be calculated from the mass or percentage of the elements in the compound. Instrumental methods of analysis are fast, accurate and very sensitive. They allow us to identify substances and find, and find how much there is. Paper chromatography can be used to separate and, al and analyze compounds and mixtures, such as the dyes and food colorings. Gas chromatography is used to separate substances that take different times to pass through a long column packed with a solid. The retention time of each substance in gas chromatography can be used to identify it. A mass spectrometer is often used to identify substances separated in gas chromatography. It does this by measuring their relative formula mass.
Some chemical reactions are explosively fast, others are tediously slow. You can measure the rate of a reaction by seeing how the amount of either reactants or products vary over time. The volume of gases produced in reactions can be measured using a gas syringe. As gas escapes into the air, gas production can also be measured by mass loss in the apparatus. For chemicals to react, their particles have to collide with enough energy to break the existing bonds. The minimum energy for the reaction is called the activation energy for the reaction. At higher temperatures, particles have more energy, so reactions usually go faster. To find the rate of a reaction, divide what happens by how long it takes. Amount of reactant used divided by time, or amount of product formed divided by time. For solutions, if you increase the concentration, you increase the rate of reaction. For gases, if you increase the pressure, you increase the rate of reaction. Reactions involving solids take place at surfaces. To make a reaction go faster, increase the available surface area by making the pieces smaller. Catalysts speed up reactions without being used up themselves. Catalysts work by lowering the activation energy needed for a reaction. Transition metals or their oxides often make good catalysts. Fuels contain stored energy which is released when they burn. Reactions that give out energy to the surroundings are called exothermic reactions. Many exothermic reactions such as burning need a kickstart of energy from a spark or a match. Many reactions require a continuous supply of energy to make them happen. They are called endothermic reactions which take in energy from the surroundings. Photosynthesis is an endothermic process. Electrolysis splitting a compound apart using electricity is also endothermic. Past photosynthesis is responsible for the energy stored in fossil fuels. In reversible reactions, one direction is exothermic the other is endothermic. The amount of energy transferred is the same in each direction. Respiration is the exothermic back reaction of endothermic photosynthesis. Solutions are pH 7 when they are neutral. Dissolved hydrogen ions make solutions acidic and dissolved hydroxide ions make them alkaline. State symbols are used in balanced equations to show the states of the reacts, reactants and products. Solids, liquids, gas and aqueous solutions. S -L Soluble salts can be made by reacting an acid with an insoluble base, such as a metal oxide. Soluble salts can also be made by reacting an acid with a metal, but some metals are too reactive and some are not reactive enough. Salt solutions may be crystallized to produce a solid salt. Insoluble salts can be made by pre precipitation reactions between two soluble salts. Precipitation reactions are useful for treating effluent or water for drinking. Ammonia dissolves in water to produce an alkali solution. Ammonium salts are important as fertilizers. Different methods are appropriate for making different salts.
Electrolysis is the decomposition of an ionic substance into elements using an electric current. The molten substance or its solution is called an electrolyte. Electrolysis works if the ions are free to move. Positively charged ions move to the negative electrode, gain electrons and are reduced. Negatively charged ions move to the positive electrode, lose electrons and are oxidized. During electrolysis of solutions containing ions, hydrogen is produced at the negative electrode unless the solution contains ions of a metal less reactive than hydrogen. Oxygen is produced at the positive electrode unless halide ions are present. Electrolysis is used to electroplate objects. Aluminium is manufactured by the electrolysis of a molten mixture of aluminium oxide and a cryolite. Aluminium forms at the negative electrode and oxygen forms at the positive electrode. There are significant energy costs in aluminium manufacture because large amounts of electricity are needed. The electrolysis of sodium chloride solution produces hydrogen chlorine and sodium hydroxide solution. These are important materials for the chemical industry. And that's about it. I did a video on C1 and C2 was covered now, so C3 shall be coming soon. And in the meantime, good luck with your exams.